Okay, guys, welcome back. So today uh, we're gonna be looking at circular motion. Okay, so circular motion is what you've learned last year, okay? If an object going around a circle with a constant speed, and that is a circular motion. However, even though the speed stays the same, but the direction is constantly changing. So that shows that there must be a force causing this change of direction. So we say it has an acceleration, and this acceleration is called uh, centripetal acceleration, okay? And the force, we call it uh, centripetal force, all right? Okay, so in the notes I give you, well, the, the velocity direction is tangential, but the speed is uh, the speed is stays the same, the direction is constantly changing. All right, so we know centripetal force is used. So what is centripetal force? Centripetal force is this force causing an object to move in a circle. But centripetal force is not a real force. It's actually always provided by other force. Say if the moon goes around the earth, right? So what is the force making the moon going around? And it's the gravity that makes the moon going around. But this gravity is providing the centripetal force. For something to go in a circle, it need to have a centripetal force and the gravity is providing that centripetal force making it go around, okay? So the other example I give you is if I have a string, I have a bob swing, 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 a bar, the bob going around, that is because there's a tension force in the string making it go around, okay? So same situation with a car driving, when a car is turning a corner, it needs a friction to make, as the centripetal force, make it turning corner. Imagine if there's no friction, the floor is very slippery, driving a car, you cannot turn it around, so you just slide across, right? If you slide across, and that's the reason why we constantly go have to change our uh, tires at a few years, like when it's become too bold, we have to go change tires. And uh, interesting fact, like in Europe, like say if you live in Germany, uh, actually each person who owns a car, you need to have two sets of tires. So one set of a tire is a summer tire where you drive normally during summer and winter uh, and autumn and spring. And then you need to, uh, uh, by law, you need to have a uh, winter tires as well. That's because in the winter, the, f the ground becomes really slippery. So that's when you need to have winter tires that gives you more traction. Okay, so and... Mm. But the problem with becoming, uh, you have when you have a lot of traction, is the tire is not as uh, efficient, or uh, it becomes like really easy to uh, to run out. So that's why they have to have summer tire during the summer. Okay, all right, sweet. So, and this year we're gonna do the same thing about circular motion, but instead of just having one force, say like gravity providing us circular motion, right? So right now we're dealing with when we have a combination of forces, and these forces are gonna add together, and then there will be a one net force, and this net force is gonna provide the centripetal force, okay? So the example I've given you, there are two examples I've given you, one is called banked corner, the other one is called, um, conical pendulum, okay? So that's two typical situations, okay? Let's first have a look at banked corner. So you've noticed like when you go on a road trip or something, you know, especially if you're going, going into mountain areas. So when you're making a turn, the road is actually tilted, okay? So why the road is tilted? In fact, just to, uh, last week, a week ago, when I was in Shanghai, I saw the maglev train. The maglev train flows on the ground. It does not even touch the ground. So if it does not touch the ground when it makes a turn, how does it make a turn? Like the rail is, because it's going so fast, the rail actually is tilted this way, okay? So you see the road is actually tilted this way and then the car just goes around like that and going around. So uh, the maglev is obviously lifting, okay? It's not sitting on the rail, rather it's just floating and then it just goes like that, okay? So how does it achieve that? How does it achieve the circular motion and which requires a centripetal force? Let's have a look. So when the car is turning around, let's pretend there's no friction, okay? Let's pretend there's no friction. Friction, there will be friction if it's needed. If it's not needed, it doesn't have to be a friction, okay? All right, let's just say there's no friction. Friction is not needed. The, the road is slippery. The question will, will give you this hint to say the road is slippery, okay? So when the car is going around, what are the forces acting on the car? There are only two forces. One is gravity, always going downwards. And then the other one is the support force, always going uh, perpendicular to the surface. So uh, in this case, these are the two forces, okay? And then we're gonna do a force analysis. So as we know, a tangential force 
I can always make it into become two direction. Okay, if a force going that direction, I can decompose it, make it to have a vertical component and a horizontal component. Okay, so you've seen what I've drawn here is reaction force, or we can call it a support force. It has become two components. One is a vertical component, and one is a horizontal component. And in the vertical direction, it just happens to be the vertical force can cancel gravity. How do I know it has to cancel gravity? That's because this car is not moving up and down. If they don't not, do not equal to each other, it's gonna start to go up and down, okay? It's not going up and down. So I know these two forces must be balanced, okay? And then there is a horizontal component of the friction. The horizontal component of the friction will become the centripetal force making the car going around, okay? And this is a typical situation. And as you can see, uh, because the centripetal force is dependent on speed, if the speed becomes too big, if speed becomes too big, then you need a lot of centripetal force. So if the centripetal force is not enough in this situation, and then we might require friction to give it a centripetal force, okay? So if the speed is too small, so if it's speed small, and then the centripetal force will require is small. So now you've got too much force going this way. Uh, making it turning around. So then friction will go the other way, try to uh, overcome it, okay? So I'll talk a bit more about that um, in the next lesson because that's kind of like almost a bit of scholarship question. There's a possibility it might show up as an excellent question, but uh, but it's really it's kind of a scholarship level, okay? All right, so for now, you need to know there is a perfect speed. For this B, and then the centripetal force will just e perfectly equal this horizontal component, and then you don't need the uh, you don't need the uh, say like reaction for us. Uh, you don't need the friction force anymore. Okay, so okay, and then the next part we do is uh, there is one other method. The other method is uh, we can use a head follow tail to add these two forces together. Okay, so if centripetal force is a net force, where does this net force come from? It's a reaction force and add the gravity force. So we can go, okay, reaction is going this way and then uh, gravity is going downwards. And then these two together just happen to be balanced in this perfect situation. And then the car, the car's uh, friction, uh, centripetal force is gonna go to the left, okay? So that's the situation, okay? So in this situation, you can see there's the angle theta that I've labeled and theta of the road, and then theta will become the top. So there's a mathematical relationship in there. You can uh, have a look. Um, so in this question, I didn't give you a calculation question, but in your booklet, uh, there is a calculation question for you guys on page eight. So you can have a think of this question, okay? But I will give you an example of a conical pendulum. So look at the second page, we got conical pendulum. Same situation, it's asking us the speed. So what kind of speed does the ball need, okay? so. Now we're gonna draw the diagram, tangential force, and then become vertical horizontal component. Vertical cancels gravity, horizontal uh, is gonna be providing the centripetal force. So here, the only force I know is I can calculate gravity. So in year 13, you're gonna be used 9.81, so not 9.80 anymore, okay? So use mass times gravity acceleration, so two times 9.81. Now give me gravity force. And then I know gravity force must equal to the vertical component because the ball is not going up or down. It's just going in a circle like that, okay? All right, so, and <clears throat> then I'm gonna use my mathematical relationship. There's the 30 degree. The 30 degree is on top. So there might be a 30 degree over here because there are two parallel, parallel lines. If there are two parallel lines, and these are the opposite angles, okay? So then they are the same size. So 30 degree, so I got 10, 30 degree will equal to the centripetal force, which is the horizontal component, and then the vertical component, okay? So those are a uh, rectangle, if you remember from last year when we did uh, force components, okay? So in this way, I can calculate how big centripetal force is. So once I calculate centripetal force, and I also need to know the radius how do I find out radius? I can simply use trigonometry because I know one meter and then I'll be able to figure out it's 0 0.5 meter uh, uh, radius, okay? And then I keep using centripetal force, Fc equals mv squared over r, I'll be able to calculate my speed uh, over here. Okay, so yeah, and it's 
a little bit confusing. So uh, I'll give you guys one more lesson on this. So in the next lesson, I'll run through maybe maybe two more questions, just a little bit like trickier. So, but the basic questions are these type of questions. So for, for this conical pendulum question, if it just shows up like that, you will be an excellent question because you have got quite a few steps you need to figure out, okay? So every, every I think, other year or something, like they will have one question like this. So there'll definitely be a question of circular motion, but it's either uh, this one or it could be, uh, could be a gravity one, like we're gonna learn later, okay? So um, yeah, so have a try with these questions and see how it goes. So send me a message if you have any questions uh, that you're not too sure of because now I got a booklet so you can just tell me what page it is on and which question it is. Okay, and oh, one more thing is uh, you guys are required to finish all these questions as your homework and I will be checking the um, after top after talk big, I'll be checking see if you've done all these homework and because uh, when we have uh, like write your report and stuff like I need to give you some feedback or your parents will know what you've been up to in school and how you're getting on with physics and it's also a good way for me to know that uh, how you're getting on so uh, I will check the homework so uh, just make sure that you you do all of them as your homework okay all right so have a good day guys and I see you guys in the next video.